Hi, in this video I want to continue talking about isomorphic binary structures. And in the last video I introduced what it meant for two structures to be isomorphic. And I mentioned that two isomorphic structures have all the same structural properties. So any property that must be shared between two isomorphic structures is what we call a structural property. Let's go ahead and look at some specific properties and decide if they are structural or non-structural. Let's start with cardinality. Remember that cardinality is just the number of elements in a set. And also remember that if two structures are isomorphic, we need to be able to find a one-to-one -one function mapping the first set onto the second set. And we can only do this if the two sets have the same cardinality. So this tells us that cardinality is a structural property. Next, let's look at the property that says that the set contains the number 7. So this property does not need to be shared by isomorphic binary structures because this property relies on the naming of the elements. Remember, two structures can be isomorphic even if they have no elements in common. So this is what we call a non-structural property. Next, what about if the binary operation is commutative? For this one, remember that the structure of the binary operation must be preserved between two isomorphic structures. So if one binary operation is commutative, the other must be commutative as well. And that makes this a structural property. And let's actually formally prove this, which I think is really good practice when you're just learning about proofs. And it's especially important when you are new to proofs that whenever you state something, you can actually back it up with a formal proof. So to prove that commutativity is a property that must be shared between two isomorphic structures, let's start by assuming we have two isomorphic structures S and S prime. And we'll say that the function phi is the isomorphism between them. Let's also assume that the binary operation star is commutative, and then we want to show that star prime must also be commutative. So if star is commutative, remember that that means that a star b equals b star a for all a and b in s. Now if we take any a prime and b prime in s prime, we know that a prime equals phi of a for some a in s, and b prime equals phi of b for some b in s, and we know this since the function phi is one to one and onto. So now we can see that a prime star prime b prime is the same as writing phi of a star prime phi of b. And since phi is an isomorphism, this tells us that it satisfies the homomorphism property. So from the homomorphism property, we know that phi of a star prime phi of b is the same thing as phi of a star b. Now that we have it written like this, we can see that phi of a star b is actually the same as phi of b star a, since a star b and b star a are the same thing in the set S. And now using the homomorphism property one more time, we get that this equals phi of b star prime phi of a. And now if we just simplify this, we know that this equals b prime star prime a prime. So we have shown with these steps that for any a prime and b prime in s prime, a prime star prime b prime equals b prime star prime a prime, which is the same thing as saying that star prime is commutative. So we can conclude from this that if one structure has a binary operation that is commutative and the structure is also isomorphic to another structure, then the binary operation of the second structure must be commutative as well. So if you have a structure with a commutative operation and another with an operation that is not commutative, you know immediately that these two cannot be isomorphic. So this proof could actually help us later on if we're trying to show that two structures are not isomorphic. Now for the next one, what about if the operation is called multiplication? This one is not a structural property because this is just the name of the operation. For example, we can show that the structure containing the positive real numbers along with the operation multiplication is actually isomorphic to the structure containing all the real numbers with the operation addition. So even though we usually consider addition and multiplication as very different, in this context of this example, they are actually the same binary operation structurally. And we can see this by finding the isomorphism between the two structures. In order to find an isomorphism, we first need to find some function that changes addition to multiplication. 
Now remember that exponentiation does just that, because if we have x to the y plus z, this is the same thing as x to the y times x to the z. So let's actually define our function phi that maps the set of real numbers to the set of positive real numbers by phi of x equals e to the x. This is a one-to-one -one function, because if we say e to the x equals e to the y, then by taking the natural log of both sides, we get that ln of e to the x equals ln of e to the y, and then this just implies that x equals y, so it is one-to-one. -one. This is also onto. To show this, we take an arbitrary positive real number, we'll call it x, and we want to show that there exists a real number r such that phi of r equals x. And if we can find this, then that tells us that every element in the set of positive real numbers is getting mapped onto by the function phi. So that's why we say the function is onto. Now, if x is in the set of positive real numbers, then ln of x is a real number, so we can let r equal ln of x. Now phi of r, which equals phi of ln of x, actually just equals x, so we have shown that this function is onto. Now finally, the last thing we need to show is that the function satisfies the homomorphism property. So if we have phi of a plus b, we need this to equal phi of a times phi of b for all a and b in the set of positive real numbers. So we get the left hand side to be e to the a plus b and the right hand side we get e to the a times e to the b and these are equal so it does satisfy the homomorphism property. So to sum up, in order for two structures to be isomorphic, they must share all the same structural properties. And you can prove they are isomorphic by finding an isomorphism, but if you want to show that they are not isomorphic, then you can try to find one structural property that is not shared.